Welcome back. Um, we're uh, continuing our Bible study, uh, looking at 1 Peter. I'm Pastor Chris uh, in Emmanuel in Giddings, Texas, and we're glad that you're joining us uh, today. Uh, this is the first or the fifth part uh, of our uh, series, and we're looking at uh, 1 Peter chapter 3. Uh, this uh, topic here is uh, the husbands and wives one. Um, kind of reflects a lot of what uh, Paul will write in Ephesians and some of the other places uh, that he'll mention this. And uh, Peter will take his look at this, and we're going to glance through that. Uh, before we open that up, uh, let's uh, go ahead and open up with prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask that you be with us, that you guide us uh, through this process, that you open our hearts and our minds so that we can understand you. Be with us today as we study your word. In your Son, Jesus Christ's name, amen. Okay, um, let's take a look here. All right, likewise. Okay, we're not going to go any further before we get that. Likewise, um, when we see that, right, it's reminding us that in the same manner as what I've just explained. So through the argument, what the last section is important before we move to this section. And as I looked at this, the section right before it, um, and please go back and re-watch the, the last video if you don't remember it. Um, this is the submission to authorities. And one of Peter's main arguments is we are to submit to the governing authorities. One, because God has put them there. And two, because by us doing so, by us showing that submission, we are an example uh, to those of unbelievers. And so I think that's the main topic as we look forward. So here, it's going to go the same thing. Likewise, wives, be subject to your own husband, so that even if some do not obey the word. Okay, so let's just look at it here. Let's not even go too far. Be subject to your own husband. Um, man, what a hot topic, right? You know, the dynamics of husbands and wives. Since Adam and Eve have been trying to figure this out. Uh, if you're married, um, even for you know, a couple months, you figure this out, this struggle. Um, here, uh, he's talking to the wives. Be subject to your husbands. Um, you know, in, in all the scriptures... And I know in the old King James, they talked about like be submissive, be those kind of things. Um, I actually have had a different take on it, especially after reading a book. And, and I grabbed it here. Um, hopefully you guys can see this, but it's called Love and Respect. Um, you know, I think, and I actually didn't get a chance to look at Peter and, his, and the Greek here. You know, I think it's be respectful wives. Um, I think that's kind of what he's going at. Uh, it's a wonderful book, especially if you've been married for any time. Um, I know, ah, man, I was going to say about 10, 10 years into our marriage, I finally picked this up and read it. I gave a light bulb. Um, apparently my wife read it much earlier. Um, she might have mentioned it to me or not. I don't know. Uh, but it really helped uh, isolate and, and understand uh, some of the differences. We actually... Even today, right now, we do ask that our premarried couples, uh, they read it. Though, I, I'll be honest, they probably don't totally get it all until uh, they've been married. Uh, but I think there could be something, right? Be respectful to your own husbands, so that even some who do not obey the word. Okay, this part here, right? Do not obey the word. This is saying there are some that are not Christian, because they don't believe the word, right? When we know, when we see the word. Um, actually, I was just going to look in my book here. You got to wonder why, well, it says obey the word. I, I think you could actually make this a capitalized, right? And you're thinking in John chapter 1, obey the word. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. I think you're talking about Jesus. Some do not obey Christ, right? They may be one without a word by conduct of their own wives so he's saying these that don't believe without even uttering a word or saying anything the wife's actions might persuade uh, those husbands to wake up 
an early church, uh, women uh, were very, uh, it wasn't uncommon for wives to come to believe and for their husbands not to. Um, women came to the faith much faster, uh, at least I've seen that in some of this, the, the research. Uh, even today we can see that. Uh, women uh, come to faith quite a bit uh, faster than men, uh, statistically speaking. Um, and what he's saying here is, you wives that are with husbands that don't know who Christ are, your conduct um, can be the light that is shown here, right? When they see your uh, respectful and pure conduct, so that's that, right? This love and respect thing that we we're talking about. Your respect. Um, they can see it. Do not let your adornment be external. Okay. Now, okay. So let's just pause here, right? Your actions matter. Now, I'll speak as a guy here and as a husband. You know, my wife's can excite me and get me to a point where I'm bold, I'm ready to take on the world, I can be energetic, um, you know, she helps me a lot. And I think, you know, I think for all husbands, right, our, our wives are our backbone, are, are, you know, they're a huge asset. Um, you know, I think there's that, uh, I'm gonna probably mess it up, but the saying, you know, uh, you know, for every good guy, there's a wonderful wife behind her, behind him, right? Uh, wives are just incredibly important and helpful. And he's talking about, right, this respect, this pure conduct of her uh, helps uh, to win them over, okay? So then you go to this external, adorning external, uh, the braiding of your hair and the putting on gold jewelry or the clothes you wear. But let your adorning uh, be uh, the hidden person of the heart within the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, is what's the next word. Uh, he now shifts gear a little bit, reminding uh, women um, it's not the outward appearance. Um, you know, our, well, our society does this today, right? I mean, we think it's it's the hair looking, you know, being perfect, being have makeup being right, the fanciest of stuff. Now, I don't think he's saying in this section that's wrong. Um, that's but what he's saying is that's not the identity of women and of Christian women. He's saying the identity is the adorning uh, be the hidden person of the heart, the person within the imperishable beauty, right? Um, of a gentle and quiet spirit. I've known wonderful, wonderful women, and I'm sure all of us do, that just have this humility, this love, this peacefulness, and their beauty just shines, right? Um, that internalness is, that internal spirit is kind of what he's pointing out. That that is is the conduct that shows, right? It's not all the flashiness. It's, you know, if you've got a woman who's showing all their, their fanciest clothes, biggest hairdos, whatever, and and if they're not a, a good person underneath, um, you know, they might get some looks, but it, it's not gonna be a, a satisfying thing in the long run. Um, but it's the spirit, the innerness uh, that we're looking for. Which in God's sight is very precious. So he's saying that gentleness, the spirit that's respectful, that's what is precious 
for this is how the holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves. So he's saying your adornment, your inner self is what's adorning, which is beautiful, I guess, for God. Maybe that's the way to say it. That's what's the, the big part. By submitting to their own husband, as Sarah obeyed Abraham, okay, so you can go back and look at Abraham. That's in Genesis. Um, Abraham does. Um, and Abraham, uh, or Sarah says, you know, in calling him Lord, um, I think it now translates as master or something like that, but, you know, um, realizing that um, she was there uh, for him. Like, there's that support system. Um, you know, and I realize this is a touchy subject, right? To, to call somebody master or whatever, right? The, the whole concept of how does this work? But especially as uh, LCMS Lutherans, we talk about, you know, the man is the head of the household and um, the wife in, in Genesis, it calls them uh, the helpmate. Um, very co-equal and working together, but there still is this little bit of, um, I won't even call it hierarchy, um, working together. And so there, um, he's, she's putting in, right? She puts Abraham uh, as a master kind of thing, right? And you are her children, right? So, and we've talked about this as God's children. We are grafted in because of Christ. Um, even though we're not a direct descendant, but we are grafted in. And Abraham is even told that, right? He's going to have numerous children, number the sea. And frankly, he's done that, right? With all those that believe are considered his children. If you do good and not fear anything that is uh, frightening, likewise, Okay, so now this is the flip side, right? Okay, likewise, husbands live with your wives in an understanding way. Okay, understanding, caring, right? In a, I'll maybe even put it the way, right? Going back to the book, a loving way. Um, the book basically, the Ephesians says, you know, husbands are to love their wives, wives are to respect their husbands. Um, and the co-equal works together. Um, and I think a lot of wives, you know, if we say, go go respect your husband, they don't have no clue what you're talking about. But men understand that. That's an honor code. A, um, you know, there's the, the code that all guys understand. There's some of that. But when we're told to go love our wives, well, guess what? We understand respect, but not as much love. And so there's that dynamic. Uh, but here is right to go understand them. Showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel. Now, I don't think it's meaning that they're inferior here. Um, she's your, she's your helpmate, and so as husbands, we need to, to recognize that. I think this is really what it's talking about. Is you know, for the most part, there are some women that are definitely more buff than than me, and and quite a few other guys. But I think it's just meaning like, for the most part, you know, men have been built stronger they're meant to to be able to lift more to be able to work harder you know that's why we see um, in society you know when men are able to to pressure women beat up on them right it's because they're this kind of the weaker vessel um, and i think that's really where it's going here since they are heirs right with you now this is important it's it's a reminder to men, they're equal. They're in the same air. They're in the same, um, they get the same inheritance. Now, back then, that was a big thing because for the most part, um, it was all went through all the, the male line and never, the females, uh, the daughters would not necessarily get part of the inheritance. It would go through males, the male line. But you are with, um, you get the same, they get the same inheritance of grace, of life, so that your prayers may be not hindered, okay? Um, he's reminding them that, that there's that equal part um, for the wives to um, respect, for the men 
to love uh, their wives. Um, you know, like I said, everybody, if you've been married any time, this is always going to be a, a strife, your struggles. Marriages have ups and downs. Um, divorce rates struggle. Um, like I said, if you've been married, you understand. I highly suggest if you're struggling through marriage or just even tuning up or whatever, this Love and Respect book is an awesome tool. Um, I'm here if you want to talk and work through things. I know there's some counseling, different things. Um, you know, that struggle, the husbands and wives, it definitely is. Uh, well, I mean, it's, marriage is work. Uh, wonderful. Um, when God puts two together, the two of you can, can work and be successful. Uh, but it does take some effort. Um, I think it's also just in general for this this little section here, you know, uh, remind ourselves that husbands and wives uh, or men and women were different. Um, we work together in the kingdom of God, but yet we are still different. Uh, there are a lot of other passages of this. This is just a short section. He doesn't, even Peter doesn't really go a lot. I mean, if you want to go spend more time, you got to go look at Ephesians and, and walk through that. And, um, and even the point of that section is about Christ laying down his life. Um, it's, it's an example. And even here, right, right, we go back to the very original. It's likewise, right? Um, submitting to authorities, showing the love to others, to be able to show uh, Christ's love. Uh, that's the point. And so uh, what an awesome and wonderful thing that God's created. Uh, husband and wives to be able to support one another, uh, to build each other up, to encourage them. And even if you're not married, maybe um, I think there's still a lot to that, right? There are people in our lives that build each other up and, and encourage and strengthen us and how God does that. And our conduct uh, in the world matters, you know, just like with the authority last time. It matters how we act represents Christ on earth. Um, yes, we can't fall flat. Yes, we make mistakes. But I think it's important for us to be reminded that, that our conduct does say something. Um, if we say uh, God is a, a God of peace and yet that's not what we are showing, well, what does that mean? Or we say, you know, we give everybody else rules. Here's all the things you can't do. And then we choose to, to be fighting over the, or we, we struggle with those and, and not even willing to, to change. What does that have to say? Um, wonderful men and women are able to, to come together in marriage and to build each other up. Um, I'm going to take a moment and let's, uh, let's pray. Uh, we'll continue to go through First uh, Peter. Um, yeah, but before we go, let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. Uh, for our time here. We ask uh, that you bless all the marriages in our congregation, in our community. May you continually build them up and encourage them. Our oh, Lord, uh, may our light shine uh, to those that are needing your faith. Those that need to see your message, we ask that you open those hearts and those minds. Our oh, Lord, we thank you so much for all the blessings you've given to us. Be with us this week as we uh, continually grow in you. In your son Jesus Christ's name, amen.